Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dale Kinnersley. I'm the Principal Consultant for the FPA. I'm convener of the Risk Authority Sprinkler Rules Working Group. I'm also convener, co-convener of the Sprink Suppression and Detection Working Group with Dr. Jim Glockling. And presentation this afternoon with the slides is going to be on water mist, rules and regulations, service and maintenance, and applications. This afternoon's presentation is just a run through on water mist. What it is, how it works, standards, applications, considerations, strengths and weaknesses, concerns in the future, FPA risk authority questionnaires and service and maintenance. So what is water mist? It's a mist system, it's very similar to a sprinkler system. However, it uses finely divided water droplets in a mist of usually 200 microns. Droplets are created at higher pressures and traditional sprinklers through small offices. And if I can offer a comparison, uh, 200 microns for mist, four millimeters droplet sizes for sprinkler heads. It's generally described as a two part action, providing thermodynamic cooling during evaporation, oxygen reduction through the steam displacement. It can be operated as a bulb system for general, sprinkler protect for general protection, very similar to sprinklers. And it can also be operated as a deluge system for compartment or local applications. So how does it work? Water mist works by rapidly converting energy to steam. It starves the fire of the oxygen it needs to burn. And what it does is the small water droplets allow the water mist to control or suppress the fire. It cools both the flame and the surrounding gases by evaporation and it displaces oxygen around the fire by evaporation. Going on to standards, um, there are currently two standards available in the UK. There is the commercial and industrial standard, which is BS 8489 2016. Um, it's a code of practice for the design and installation of water mist standards. Um, but previously in the UK, what we used to use many years ago was uh, NFPA 750. Obviously, now we have our 8489 standard for commercial and industrial systems. And for residential and domestic, we currently have BS 8458 to cover those uh, disciplines. So where is water mist most uh, applicable? So typical applications, gas turbines, fuel storage areas, restaurant commercial catering areas, prisons have been used for water mist systems, chemical stores and life safety systems. But most recently, it's now been included in houses of multiple occupation, offices, schools, hotel and guest houses, restaurants and leisure facilities and health clubs. So when we talk about local application water mist system, we're looking at doing 3D uh, or application to uh, an object. Classed as an independent system, it provides complete deluge over the object. It discharges on the activation of a fire detection system. Uh, and as you can see from the diagram there, the no pumps or water tanks required. You can do this from a cylinder system. Whereas when we're looking at general mist protection for total flooding and general protection, which is very similar to sprinklers, we're looking at pump systems, control panels, discharge nozzles, and we're looking at uh, open, it can be used as an open deluge system, but most commonly, and very similar to a sprinkler system, a sealed bulb system. So considerations with regards to water mist. It's a bespoke solution which requires performance testing to demonstrate its capability for specific applications and situations, which means that there must be a test protocol for the application that you wish to apply water mist, which is unlike sprinklers. Installation standards are pretty much manufacturer specific for approved applications and water mist components are bespoke to the manufacturer. So if you have a system from one manufacturer and you wish to modify your system, you must use that manufacturer's components rather than uh, another manufacturer's as they're not interchangeable. Applications for water mist generally suit life safety. They may not be suitable for property protection. It may be acceptable based on proven realistic fire tests for the specific risk as mentioned earlier. Each water mist um, system must be proven for the fire scenario that it's going to go in to protect. Not all areas of a building can be protected from a manufacturer uh, of a water mist system, depending on their fire testing that they've done, and not all water mist systems are equal. So what are the strengths and weaknesses? Strengths, very effective fire suppression in enclosed environments. They provide excellent environmental cooling properties. 
They can be a standalone local application system as we've seen in one of the previous slides. Design and installation is based on fire test scenarios. So if you're applying a water mist system to a certain uh, uh, particular area, you know that uh, having done the research, it should be applicable for that particular scenario. It has reduced water supplies in terms of uh, comparison to sprinklers. It has gas cooling properties. It's good on liquid fuel fires and it's very good on high out heat output fires. The weaknesses of it, it's not very good in ventilated spaces. It's limited to a ceiling height of five meters. It's not very effective on small fires. And unfortunately within the um, guidelines, there's no design solutions for common issues in commercial premises where we've got ductwork and cable tray issues, deep beams and uh, bay construction, open areas between floors, design considerations uh, do not take these into account in the standards. There is no third party approval scheme for designers or components. Um, there's very little benefit once the water is exhausted and it's not very uh, effective on deep seated class A fuel fires. So water mist, it's a quick summary. All suppression systems should be tested to meet four requirements. These requirements, it should uh, meet the ambition of the system and it should be well understood. Is it a life safety system that water mist is being applied to? Is it item protection? Is it property protection? Is there amount of business resilience required from the system? And therefore, the system should be capable of meeting these ambitions. The system should be designed in accordance with an appropriate national or international standard, which we have BS8489 and BS8458. The system component should have been tested and listed in accordance with an appropriate standard. Apologies. And the designer and installer should be in possession of third party certification for any work that's designed and undertaken. So what are the concerns? Unlike sprinkler systems, water smith systems are project specific and each particular hazard or occupancy requires its own very specific design. Therefore, it's not possible to design a mist system by reference to one of the standards available. Unlike sprinkler systems, where we have BSEN 12845 commercial and industrial systems, or 9251 for residential and domestic, which enables a full design to be produced to a fully compliant system, this is not the case with the current water mist standards. There is insufficient guidance, training and manuals available at this moment in time. Uh, inappropriate referencing of sprinkler equivalency and assumed levels of reliability. This is unfortunately um, a reference that's constantly made for um, sprinklers and water mist and they are not uh, equivalent in terms of what they offer. They have very wa short water supply durations and the question is, is it appropriate for property protection? So what's the future? It's a promising technology. It makes it effective for some uh, fire protection scenarios. It has supporting standards and certification schemes. They're, they're just emerging and there is a new suite of European standards, EN 14972, that are currently being written. Some are currently available um, through BSI and some are still um, currently being worked on. The current British standards, um, they will be replaced by the European standards once they've been approved. More fire testing is being undertaken for approval of components and manufacturers are developing new products to cater for different fire scenarios. So it's an evolving technology. Water mist questionnaires, as you can see on the screen there, this is something that's available through Risk Authority and the uh, Fire Protection Association. And the quest water mist questionnaires aim to understand the ambitions of each water mist system. So um, as it's a complex kind of system um, and there's fewer standards to rely on, um, basically what the um, questionnaire is asking for is that all design elements have been considered, they use risk control logic and that has been followed, they're properly recorded and they are owned. It's the only approach. The questionnaires ask details of the steps that must be taken for the provision of an effective water mist response. And the questionnaires are split into three for different types of water mist systems that are currently uh, offered out in the marketplace. And any difficulty by any provider to complete uh, the, the, the questionnaires um, should serve as a warning that the system is not appropriate for the risk that you're considering. Moving on to maintenance. Maintenance is covered in 8458 and it's covered in Clause 7 and Clause 8. 
basically we're looking at water mist having a visual inspection of the nozzles and any hazard changes changes of use to the area that the water mist systems applied uh, applied to or any system modifications or compartment modifications and changes uh, there's manual testing requirements so a flow test of the system an alarm test if there's any remote monitoring and exercising of the valves that are on the system and then a reinstatement of the system on completion of all the tests however there is a requirement that all service and maintenance activities are logged within a dedicated system logbook and every service and maintenance is undertaken by a competent person water mist for commercial slightly different it's far more comprehensive it's covered in clause 11 of bs 8489 and it's including i haven't listed them all but not limited to weekly testing of the pumps uh, gauge reading and water levels monthly testing of the batteries and the detection system, a quarterly test every 13 weeks, you must do a hazard review, check the nozzles, the pipes and the supports, the supply valves and the alarms, six monthly uh, dry valves, open nozzles, uh, fire and rescue um, valves, alarms, receiving centres and detection systems, on an annual basis, pump sets, storage tanks and strainers need to be checked, and three yearly, the tanks and stop non-return non valves and as highlighted in there, there is a requirement to test the nozzles every three years for every commercial water mist system. Ten yearly tanks and pressure vessels. So moving on to the water mist uh, nozzle testing frequency, as required under the standards, a selection or a percentage of the nozzles installed shall be tested. So as I uh, alluded to on the screen there, under the British standards for uh, commercial and industrial, Water mist nozzles must be tested every three years. Under NFPA standards, every five years for a bulb door automatic system. And if you have open nozzles for a local application system or a deluge system, it's every 10 years. Under the American standard FM Global, it's every five years. The new European set of uh, sweep documents, 14972, will be every five years. And offshore will be ab every year. So with regards to testing, just to let you know that the FPA offer a water mist testing uh, facility, competitively priced, and we produce a detailed report 12259-1. Uh, details are available on the email shown on the screen, sprinklers at the fpa.co.uk. Uh, for more in, uh, detailed information on water mist, um, Dr. James Glockling, the technical director of the FPA and risk authority, has recently undertaken a water mist uh, webinar and called Water Mist, Why It's Complicated, and this is available as a free download on the West Risk Authority website shown on the screen. Thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of your day.